Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to bring to this virtual stage the voiceover cast from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original cartoon. I'm giving them in the order of the song. Y'all know it. Sing it along with me. First and foremost, we've got Cam Clark as Leonardo. Hey, Cam Clark is here. Hey, yeah. Barry Gordon Donatello is here. Hey, hey, hey guys. Hey, Barry. Hey. Rob Paulson's Raphael. What's up? What's up, hey. kids? Hey. Hi. Last Hi, but Robbie. certainly not least, Hi, the party dude himself, Townsend Coleman, Michelangelo. Woo. Hey. hey. Oh, hey. my goodness. Oh, hey, my kids. goodness. There's my br turtle bros, my yeah. brother. Hey. Hi, Townie. Yes. Hey, yes, Cammy. Yes. How are you, man? How exciting. Yeah. I don't know if there is a, a possible bigger source of pop culture than this space right now. Wow. You guys are like literally everything. Everyone loves the turtles. I love the turtles. Um, we're going to start off in the right way. This has been a crazy year. 2020 is the, a year to remember. But what is one positive thing that you guys have come out of this whole you know, pandemic experience with? Oh, oh. Let's go, Cam. Oh. Let's start with you. I don't have to see any people I hate. <laughs> <laughs> face to face you're absolutely right you're right you don't gotta you can be like i'm unavailable shoes. like i'm unavailable <laughs> honestly honestly victor i think we kind of were broaching this subject a bit earlier with uh some of you folks from wizard world and, and thanks again for having us of and course, all of you of guys course. out there for paying Truly attention an honor. um it is uh but this whole experience that that i remember you know it was only a few months ago but thinking oh my god uh well i hope I think I can work from home, fortunately, but I sure miss everybody. And oh, well, all the conventions we had booked, the traditional ones that were usurped by COVID con, right. um, all went away. But I'll be damned. Here we are. We're living that necessity is the mother of invention. And in yeah. a lot of ways, it's better. As you and yeah. your Wizard World um, folks suggested, there are a lot of people who ordinarily don't get a chance to go to any so true. convention. So, so, so true. thank you. And the yeah, fact from, that it's, uh, you know, they can tune in from wherever, yeah, you know, yeah. we're always amazed when we ask people at a live concert, where did you drive from? You know, they say, oh, two states away. It took oh my God. 27 hours. Right. But this way, I mean, I've been on a couple of these things where you got Australia and Italy and we Chile, have that now. Chile, and right. Chile, you know, <laughs> right. all at the same time. It's like, yeah, yeah I set my alarm clock for 4 a.m. That's so well, I got to I got to say yeah. for me, um, it, it's it's given me the chance to uh, to uh, realize that that this is sort of forcing us to do things in a different way. Like um, not wear and, pants and like that, <laughs> um, which I'm not. And Turtles uh, don't and, do that. What? And, and and we keep them in the back of our shells. And then yeah. uh, <laughs> and to keep forging ahead um, yeah. in many ways, in new ways. Yeah, um, nice. But the, the thing that it's really done for me is made me appreciate um, the people that I, my friends and family that I don't get to see anymore yes, uh, yes. in a much deeper way. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's really made me long to be with people um, more so than I, because, you know, I don't have it now. Of and, course. Yeah. Of course. And so I appreciate I had, it a lot more. Point. Yeah. I had a surprise birthday party, Zoom birthday party a couple of weeks ago. And I wasn't and, invited. And you weren't. I didn't make no, a guess. No, none of us. No. And. A couple of friends were like, hey, let's do our little Zoom. Maybe we'll play categories. I mean, like, OK, so I turn it on and all of a sudden the screen starts on fire with people who it's like, wait, what is my cousin Lorette doing with this guy from work? <laughs> and what Isn't is that it? great? And, and uh, but what my brain did in the nanosecond, the original seconds as it's going, I don't know what this is. I don't I, I don't have records of this. For this nanosecond, I went, I have just fallen off a bridge and I am wow. plummeting to my death because why else would would cousin Adam be with, you know, someone from work and this right. person from grammar school? I'm going, right. I'm seeing everybody. This can't be good. <laughs> my life is flashing before my eyes. What's my happening? life is flashing. This can't be a good thing. Well, these oh are all great That's answers. I, I mean, I at first. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't compete with these answers. I have to be completely honest. And for me, the greatest discovery mm -hmm. uh, has been uh, that my wife uh, decided that she could make sourdough bread. Hey, and, hey. Um, 
That's and, that wins. And Can't oh you? my gosh, yeah. does she make sourdough bread? Okay, it's the best sourdough bread I have ever tasted. And you know, chicken wings, right? She's not a cook. She's a PhD. She's all of the things. Are that you she doing is. drop offs? But right, oh like, my gosh, she yeah. is Are just dropping off for this. Christmas. This talent, <laughs> unbelievable. I, I, yeah, that that adds to our Christmas. Barry, list. are you going to drop that? those off at our yeah. house? Cam wants to know if yeah, she delivers. We can try to figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 That's that's all we need to know. Yeah. Uh, actually, I got to give a shout out to the people that are watching. Like you said, around the world. We literally have people from Toronto, uh, California, Oregon, New Jersey, Florida, Alabama, Texas, Arizona, Kentucky, Ohio, wow. Washington, North Carolina, Darwin, Australia, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Okay. Woo! Like, day. wow. That oh is absolutely insane. But yeah. again, makes perfect sense because you guys like literally are, are like kings of pop culture. It's, it's so absolutely true. And that goes to my next question. Like, okay, so TMNT is this global phenomenon, right? And I'm not going to ask, like, could you know, because obviously who can guess these things, but I want to know what was it like when you guys were first pitched this quirky cartoon of martial arts turtles? Like, what were you thinking when you got that call? Did you go, well, of course, or what? <laughs> let's, let's start, Barry, let's start with you. I thought my agent was on acid, basically. <laughs> uh, he called me up and said, you know, I've got this audition for you for a thing called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I have to confess, I had not heard of the the, cart the comic book. So, right. so it was already a phenomenon, but I didn't really know that. And I just said, all right, you have nothing better to do than to call me up and make up silly things. And what is it really? <laughs> and he said, no, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And um, and I said, well, OK, but then, you know, but then I saw the, the sides and they were so good. You know, they were just they were really cool. And I thought, I wow, this is good. I don't know if it's going to be a success, you know, because it's so <laughs> weird. But I like Nobody it. tell Barry how good of a show it actually was. Don't tell him that. It's, <laughs> no, we got to keep this a surprise. Yeah. But, uh, but that was my first feeling. I love it. Yeah. Townsend, what about you? Well, Robbie and I were working on a show called Fraggle Rock at the time. And I remember the director, the uh, voice director on that show, a guy named Stu Rosen, came into one of our Fraggle Rock sessions and said, hey, you guys aren't going to believe what I'm going to be casting and directing next. And he opened his briefcase and pulled out an issue of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic. Oh, and wow. I had I had never heard of it, uh, which is not a big surprise. I wasn't a big comic reader. Um, but I looked at it and I, I, I sort of skinnied my eyes and I said, really? And yeah. he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll bring you guys in and, you know, you'll audition for it and stuff. And so we went and auditioned and uh, here we are. Yeah. Just yes. Yeah, that's, that's that's exactly what happened in, in a nutshell. And um, it was uh, I, I immediately thought of, you know, pitching that show to somebody who ultimately did it. Say, here's the deal. These four turtles who get coated in this ooze and that enables them to do ABC. <laughs> but if you're a human and you get coated in the ooze, then you become a rat. And so. Uh, yeah, but like Tony said, at least you were a part of it, you know. Oh, man. Incredible. <laughs> My yeah. experience is a little different. Uh, Talk to you know, us. the basic question of, you know, what did you think when you saw the sides? Uh, I had just come off of a gig uh, being up at uh, Will Vinton's studio, being talking lips who wear sneakers for a uh, Kool Aid commercial. <laughs> I yeah. think I remember like, that commercial. So, what? I remember that commercial. Yeah. So I'm like, all in a day's work. I mean, what, yeah. you know? Uh, you know, turtles from ooze, uh, talking lips with sneakers. Um, I'm like, all right, you know, bring it on, whatever. Yawn. Yeah, will the check clear? I'm in. Yeah, right. <laughs> does it pay? Right. Oh my God, I love that. I absolutely love that. So we got some folks from the UK checking in. Uh, we actually have Andrew Brady has a, has a statement. You guys are all four huge staples of my childhood. I love you all. How often do you get that message? And does it still bring you the same level of joy every time you hear it? Well, that was the first one. Uh, <laughs> what? I've never heard that. Who knew? What? Do they make action figures? Seriously? Um, Stop. <laughs> honestly, Victor, uh, when in any of us, this is the God's truth. It happens a lot. And no, it is never not wonderful. Um, right. When people find out, we're, look, 
we don't draw them and we don't write them. We've all had remarkably fortuitous careers and knock wood, we're still working every day pretty much. But um, the, the, uh, when people find out who we are and more specifically with respect to turtles, it does nothing but make people so happy. And this is also the God's honest truth. Often people say these incredibly lovely things through tears, yeah, through it. joyful tears of nostalgia, stories about how, how difficult their, their childhood was. And but for Ninja Turtles, it would have been absolutely in the dumper. And, and, it, and it is never not overwhelming to hear that. And they can be, beautiful. and they can be, you know, six foot six linebackers. Totally, so you know, yeah. these cons <laughs> who, who are saying this through their tears. Can That's I so give true. you a hug? <laughs> Incredible, yeah. Incredible. It's I amazing, mean, and it never gets old ever. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I mean, because it's it's so very true. Literally, because of you, I have a background in art, but it's because of you that I learned the names of the four masters. I knew they How were turtles yeah. before I knew they were artists. Like that was, right. you know, that's just the truth of things. So it's it's beautiful the way that it just touches pop culture. But here's here's a real honest question here. The 80s was so full of so many memorable shows that you guys have all touched on different parts and pieces. Was there something in the water? Why was the 80s so great for creativity? Like it's the it's the decade of my birth. I won't lie, but Same magic saying, yeah. things came out of the 80s, man. What was it? God, I don't know, Cameron. You well, you're a rock star, Cam. You know everything. What was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cam goes all the Boy, way back to the 60s. That's yeah. right. The 1860s. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know. That was a time travel episode of the Turtles, y'all. That's what I that mean, is. They talk about, you know, even in movies, they talk about 1939 as, yeah. you know, being Gone this, with the wind and, this mm -hmm. right. year. Yeah. I think that sometimes, I, I, I believe that right above our heads, <laughs> metaphorically, or maybe literally, there's this energy, almost like one of those things that the dry cleaners, you know, when they push the button to bring your mm -hmm. clothes around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and ideas are just up there in the electricity. And we go, huh, you know, let me get in camera, grab one. you know, yeah. and you grab one and people kind of do like this. It's why sometimes you'll see successfully, even sometimes mm -hmm. three different versions of the same theme of a, of a movie, like when yeah. there was places in the heart, the River and Country, three right. wonderful movies mm -hmm. about struggling in America's, you know, heartland. Right? Yeah. All of the same year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, ideas are out there and it's yeah. our job to, uh, if we're fortunate to go, hey, look what's right above my head and tug it down. So I think creative forces can work like that. That yeah. uh, Without question. Styles. Yeah, I think, I think lo logistically, Right. There, there certainly seems to be something in terms of 19, the late 70s mm -hmm. were, uh, and in fact, turtles were close to the last vestiges, or rather, I'm sorry, it, it went from Saturday morning cartoons being Saturday morning with the occasional mm -hmm. uh, um, syndicated show on after school and all that. But all of a sudden, it, everything exploded. Cartoon Network, HBO, I mean, video. All over the place, right. All that Victor, Victor, what is different about you guys as mm -hmm. the fans, I, I will speak for myself, with the exception of Mel Blanc, I mean, yeah. cartoons were just cartoons and it didn't, I, I didn't care who did the voices. Right. And you guys come up to conventions and even when I was your age or younger, it's not like I would have, gone paid good money to run out and get an autograph of hey. you know the cast of cool mccool you know yeah um, that's a that's a great point i yeah. you, you know when i started to do comic cons and and i kind of started a little later than the, than the other guys but when i started to do comic cons um people would come up to me and talk about a show that i did <laughs> and i'd say did I do that show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me? Are I sure? don't remember doing so, that show. I actually have to go to IMDb and I'd say, oh my gosh, I did that show. I did that. <laughs> I didn't remember so, you but, guys. But, you know, people like come up and talk happen. Mighty Orbots. And right. I'm saying, what? But the, but, Listen, but the, I love the Mighty Orbots. Nobody knows about that one. But the 80s, um, 
allowed the opportunity for a lot more programming. They needed yeah. stuff to fill all that and um, all these well, new DVDs, um, um, right? Laser discs, right? Uh, you know, v I, I VHS, mean, all of that. beta. Yeah, well, so when, data. when cable was getting cable was getting really big back then. Totally. And so, like you said, yeah, they had uh, a lot more um, outlets that they had to fill. And right. it's also, Robbie, you touched on it, too. Uh, that's when the syndicated cartoons started. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, Which is exactly us. how our show started. Yeah, that right. was us. Yeah. That we, our we show is fast backwards show. because generally a show, yeah. as you may recall, is a big hit. On a on like you know the Flintstones uh, was an ABC show and Johnny Quest mm -hmm. I think was as well, and then if they get don't mention successful. Johnny Quest Rob oh sorry sorry <laughs> I call it the Cam Clark ooh. story but um but in any case yeah and then they then they revert or they they flip over to mm -hmm. syndication our show started being syndicated by Group W, and it, it did so well that CBS said yeah let's take a flyer and spend another fifty million bucks doing more and. With Most basically a five-episode serial, I mean, which was right. also yeah. very unusual. Paid for by the co by the toy company, who, by the one way, story that was, you know, was told over the five toys. Days. Yeah. Yes. Play yes. Maker, yes. I think yes. The toys. Yeah. I think they do. Uh, well, no, no, they they just lost it to Hasbro. I think. Oh, is that right? Um, okay. Like what? a year or so ago. Really? So it's been it's it's very recent. It's very very recent. But I wow. wouldn't say it's under Hasbro now. But uh, again, the thing that makes this so great is. You guys did have such a significant part in in changing the tone and the feel of what the turtles were. The comic books were very grim, very dark. Yeah. You guys made it very kid friendly. What was it like to have that sort of um, creative push behind you, knowing that uh, Eastman and Laird were were behind it all the way to change up what the tone was of, of the turtles? Did you guys have conversations about that? Well, we didn't have a reference. You know, you hear about actors. Right. Who, who like, oh, I didn't read the, you know, they might read the book, right. but I didn't want to see, you know, Betty Davis did this uh, before or Clark Gable. I don't want to see their version right for myself. I had never heard of it. So I didn't right. have to like mix it up or change it up. Right. The guys, the creators, yeah, they're the ones who, that's a question for them. It's like, you know, how did you feel about going, this right. isn't our, this isn't our cartoon. This isn't our comic <laughs> book. What are you doing? And then they did a different, a, a whole other kind of approach when they did the uh, the live action movies. The features, totally. So right. the, I think that right. they were very conscious of the fact that there were different audiences for the Turtles. And yeah, they and tried I, to reach as broad uh, an audience as they possibly could by do. moving into all right. of those niches. Well, I think also remember, like we touched on the, the, the first five episodes and ultimately the first 13, as I recall, um, were paid for by Playmates Toys. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the the whole deal, look, we're all in show business. And if you're lucky right. enough, we're all lucky enough to be blue collar workers in the dream factory. And that's a great place right. to be. But of when you course. start creating, we all have friends who've created and pitched shows. And if it's your first project and Victor Dandridge Productions says, okay, I'll give you 10 million bucks. Here's how, here's how it's going to work. It's my money. And we'll figure it out. Right. So. And so my suspicion is that Playmates, obviously, and brilliantly said to Kevin mm -hmm. and Peter, who were probably in no position to, I, I know Kevin, we all know Kevin really well. I've only met, I don't know Peter. Yeah. But my suspicion is that they kind of thought, well, artistic integrity is nice, but a couple million bucks is really nice too. <laughs> and the Playmates folks probably said, well, this is a ostensibly a kid's show. Right. So we want to be able to have kids watch it. And what I think it speaks so perfectly to the power of this specific franchise, it's very unusual that a franchise can withstand and enjoy all sorts of different interpretations, yeah. very much irrespective so. of, of the producer or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there are versions of this that are dark and intense and features mm -hmm. and all that. And then there are fun kid versions. And now it's been around for 30 plus years and the fan base is exponentially larger, Victor. It's so rare. It's so true. So yeah. unusual. Yeah, I was and it's 12 all years turtles. old when we started. But, yeah. Wow. Wow. 
I love it. I love it. Actually, okay, so Andrew Brady says, Leonardo is my favorite. Cam, that's for you. I do. Uh, he taught me so much, like how to conquer my fears. What are your thoughts on each turtle having a psychological effect on personal growth? I think that's a great, great question. Wow. I'm going to piggyback on that. Mm. And Well, yeah, not just he, you, of course, but how did you add your particular little piece to that? How did you develop that character um, <laughs> for each? Well, of Townsend being from Cleveland was a total surfer, dude. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes. Lake natural. Erie surfing. Some big waves on Lake Erie. <laughs> huge, huge sport right there. Huge sport. Do not get in those waters. Don't do that. <laughs> Barry, so, what about you? Well, you know, I I was the nerd on the show. I was the nerd in real life. <laughs> so, so, but what we called a nerd then, of course, was, you know, someone who felt that brain power was a really important thing. And, and mm -hmm. what I hear, you know, from, from people that come up to me in comic cons about Donatello is the fact that, you know, people said, you know, I went into tech because of Donatello. I went into science awesome. because of Donatello. I, you know, and that just really warms my heart because, you know, these are people that are, <laughs> are doing incredible things for humanity right yeah. now. And the fact that Donatello had even been a small influence on that is, is just mind blowing to me. Amazing. I, I, think get, I, I get fans I, I, who say I went into rehab as a result of Raphael. Which, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it takes. I mean, I, I, I would have thought that would have been Michelangelo, but <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a party well, dude, but it's a different. I think um, we all I think, I think we all get uh, uh, these comments all the time, especially when we're at Comic Cons. Yeah. Um, you know, and with Michelangelo, uh, I very often hear that Michael from fans when they were kids, you know, six, seven, eight years old um, and perhaps going through uh, really tough times, even at that age, perhaps their their home life was uh, not good or their parents right. were splitting up or whatever. And Michelangelo uh, taught them how to have a positive attitude or yes. gave them the opportunity to smile and learn how, you know, to rise above those things with humor. Um, I, you know, I, uh, last year we were at a Comic-Con and Barry, I, I, I think I shared this with you at one point, but um, uh, one, of the, one of the gentlemen there came up to me and we were having a, a conversation about this very thing. And he said, you know, I'll be honest with you. It was Donatello. When I was a kid, it was Donatello who taught me that it was OK to be smart. How about that? Wow, and I thought, beautiful. wow, that it's so amazing to me that because I don't think any of us really I didn't think when we were recording these shows no. that we were, you know, having that kind of influence on. Right. Not even close. But a to hear that came. all these years later is just amazing to me. Yeah. A Annie? thought just came to me uh, with this question that leads back to your other thing about like interpretations and like when you said Robbie about the creators going oh okay we'll switch it up as the boys know they all got to be these goofy guys mm -hmm. right. and I was pardon the expression the straight man and <laughs> Hey, hey, <laughs> any bounds. What what can we say? It's I mean, uh, I'm glad they were trying. We I love wanted you, to Cam. be a silly clown like they were doing. And so I pretty much was wanting to be the character that I later came to got to play on the tick with these with these yeah. boys, which is the, you know, this super, you know, this guy, you know, the zero <laughs> hero. And I remember the director, Sue Blue, took me out in the hall. The guys have heard heard this because I was starting to play Leonardo like this, wanting to make him be a cartoon of, of this guy, you know, right. He met and he, she calls me out in the hall and she goes, what are you doing? I went, well, I'm just making him kind of silly on other guys. And she goes, don't you know, <laughs> yeah. the straight guy. So right. as the straight guy, the serendipity here was that the people who come up to me, because I played him earnestly and sincere and let these other guys be the crazy monkeys, um, I got the compliments of, uh, you know, you were the leader and you taught me yes. about leadership as opposed to poking fun mm -hmm. of being in charge. This is a new yeah. thought to me just this second. It's so true. As, as we're that talking, like, well, maybe that direction answers your question that I would not have chosen yeah. to right. play him earnest right, if i had right. given that, i wanted to be silly like you guys right right but this goes that's such a salient point yeah. cam victory this goes right to your point about 
did you have any idea dot 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 and right. and townsend mentioned it we uh, before the advent of comic con mania <clears throat> and the opportunity to social media to get the chance to really have FaceTime, even virtually. Right. I loved cartoons as a kid. Most of us with a pulse did. Right. But I promise you, and I had things that influenced me that I still remember that mean a lot to me, usually because of the Flintstones at Hanna-Barbera and, and Warner Brothers primarily. But man, when you meet people who talk to you about these, like Cam just said, or Tony, or, the specific issues in their personal lives they were informed by a cartoon show. Mm -hmm. It is so much bigger than a paycheck, than an action figure, than, a, you know, we've all been rich and poor, rich is better. But these opportunities to really have a legacy that by their own admission, shaped people and changed their lives. Yes, yes. Right. holy yeah, shit. Magilla Gorilla didn't quite change my life. <laughs> <laughs> Not right, you know, yeah. I, not quite. Uh, so not it's quite, crazy that the turtles had that influence with yes. I'm growing up watching cartoons and yeah. they were just fun. And when I turned off the TV, that was it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, when the, when the turtles were around, they were, they were always there. And speaking of turtles being there, I got to bring on one of my favorite turtles of all time. Michelangelo, uh, can you join us right quick? Well, Mikey, are you here? I did. Mikey, is another Michelangelo? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mikey is here. Is turtles are real people? Like that's that's one hundred percent absolutely true. I'm calling calling well, Michelangelo. Calling maybe Michelangelo. Michelangelo's in rehab. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's not over. He's no, got to he's, he's got to pop imaginary in here. Imaginary friend. There he is. There he is. Oh my gosh. Hey, hey he's he here, ladies and gentlemen. Mikey, Lincoln. what's shaking, hey guys? Yo. Is time to buy the 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 green things? Oh yeah. Cool. Oh. Is he speaking Esperanto? <laughs> wait, wait, you're, you're breaking sure. up a little breaking bit. We can't up hear. A bit. The, the, the signal can't... from the sewer is not coming in real strong. Uh, Isn't that the worst? Wi-Fi. I know, right? Donnie, fix the Wi-Fi, man. Come on, what's going on? <laughs> I'm just yeah. going to keep now? nodding yes, like you think I understand you. That's right. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? We can hear you better, yes. Okay, cool. Are we going to go get pizza sometime? Townsend, you got to get Absolutely. some pizza with Mikey, man. As soon as you the vaccine believe gets it, dude, done, are you kidding? Well, awesome. As <laughs> soon as they do the vaccine, we'll all meet buy up. the meet and greet passes? Yes, with the meet and greets, you definitely can get some pizza together. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Wow. A hot fudge, marshmallow, tuna fish, and Doritos pizza. It's my favorite, bro. Awesome. And yes, Joey's yes. in hot fudge, dude. <laughs> well, again, I have to get going for, like, entertaining. Uh, so I'm going to go, but I'll catch you guys in the rewatch party. Thanks, All Mikey. Right. Much appreciated, guys. Thanks, buddy. Oh Thanks. my God, I love it. I love Take it. Turtle power. Yeah, always, you might always. Rinse that that suit out with the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it might have a little COVID on it. Again, folks watching, <laughs> please check out those those paid exclusive pieces, the private one on one video chats, the autographs. There's going to be a. a awesome autograph piece that all four of these guys are going to sign that's going to go around uh, and, and everybody's going to get a signature on it. So you definitely want to get that. I'm probably going to ask for that for Christmas. I'm not going to lie. I have no shame. Um, but <laughs> just to, to play that's, it up. Okay. That's a week from today, it. right? But, uh, no, uh, no, but kind of it's getting close. It's getting close. I think we got like two weeks. Don't we got, like, even two weeks. Oh, okay. bite yeah, your yeah. tongue, Townsend. <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> All right. So pizza confessions, secretary. pizza confessions. Let's let's jump right into it. Because of you, um, I'm guilty of trying some bizarre things on my pizza, um, ice cream at, at school, uh, Skittles, kick cereal. Oh What's the weirdest thing we'd find on your pizza? Cam, let's start with you. Oh, fine. <laughs> The weirdest I just put thing. you on the spot immediately. <laughs> my, uh, I would say my footprints when I forget that it's on the floor <laughs> and I walk through an old pizza box. That doesn't yeah. stop me from eating it. You see, no. if pizza in nice. my house, if pizza falls on the floor, we have a 48 hour rule. Oh, that's what right. I'm talking about. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I love it. I absolutely love it. Rob, what I, about you? I still, you know, uh, it's not that weird, but when I was a little guy in Livonia, Michigan. My parents got a pizza and I don't know why I remember this, but they, it, it had shrimp on it and I loved it. Wow. So I put shrimp on my own cause I, it rarely shows up in a, um, uh, uh, in the, um, you know, the menu at little Caesars or Domino's or wherever you yeah, get your, yeah. but I really like shrimp on my pizza. 
that's that's brand new wave right there. We are probably yeah, all going to try this. If this is something that he's he's like pranking us on, we're all about to fall for it. I'm just warning you about that right no, now. it's true. It's I love happen. it. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, okay, okay. Townsend, what about you? Dude, I, I'm sorry. I, I am s- such a normal pizza eater, so I don't have any w- weird stuff. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, your basic mushroom and sausage and uh, and hot fudge. Okay. All right. Nice. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. A little hot fudge. You know. That's right. Barry? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm pretty much of a traditionalist. I have been getting in a couple, one weird pizza that's every kind of mushroom known to humanity. Ooh, with truffle oh, oil, with Magic truffle oil. mushrooms. <laughs> oh, truffle yeah, oil. yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's, it's so cool. you know it doesn't have the tomato sauce on it. It's just no, a no, no. white pizza with a lot Same of nice pizza. cheese. And, and, and now with, have... a, with a sourdough with a homemade sourdough crust. <laughs> there you, you go. Know uh-huh. there you they go. have there you, you know how they have pot brownies. Do they have pot <laughs> pizza? You know, um, like, oh, why not? not? Margarita it's coming. pizza. <laughs> why not? It's coming now. Oh my goodness! Listen, I'm still stuck on how come no one's actually done. Note to Go self. Ahead, please. Yeah, Mary Jane's margarita pizza, right? Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. That's a, it's a franchise the in the making. Yeah. while you're waiting for your oils. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there's your edibles. <laughs> now, ah. you guys didn't just voice the turtles. Uh, quite a few of you have other voices uh, within the show itself. Sure. Uh, we've got Bebop, we've got Rocksteady. Um, yeah. Some have stepped in as, as Shredder and Krang, I believe. Uh, uh, what yeah. was the best part? <laughs> in there. Um, what was the best part about voicing something other than one of the turtles? The well, other three have to answer that because I just got to watch them all. It's, it was a, let me tell you something. I had the best and still do, but I had the best goddamn job in Hollywood to sit with these three folks for a couple hundred almost episodes. Oh yes. my God, what a guess. So yeah, tell them all you guys what you did because I just got to watch. It was great. Well, I had a great time with, with, with Bebop because, uh, you know, I was, I was basically hired for my voice. I mean, I didn't, do any voice for Donatello, you know? Well, I you just, also happen to be a pretty damn good actor, Barry. Yeah, yeah, Thank I was going to say, not just the sound. No, but I mean, but I rate, you know, all I had to do is talk a little higher and then <laughs> I was Donatello. That was it. I mean, it was so, there was not a lot of, uh, py- you know, w- vocal pyrotechnics involved. Got like you. Rob does so frequently. And well, do a little, and, do a little, you, you're here. Jesus, please do a little bebop for but us. Bebop, yeah. So bebop put me, cause I was a singer. So I did have a low range. Mm-hmm. So I was able to get it a little lower. <laughs> and then once I got it lower, then I kind of decided he was a New York guy. Great. And ah. then when I saw the picture and it said, you know, he was kind of a piggy guy. So I added a, <laughs> then I added a. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so no. That's how Bebop came around, you know. It was and that's fun. no quick bunny, let me tell you. No, no, no. That's no, no, not a quick bunny. Quick bunny put me in the other part of my range. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which I don't think I can even do anymore, you know. <laughs> you can't drink it slow if it's quick. I mean, that's like. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, that was my, my Edith Bunker uh, range. <laughs> <laughs> so great. I can hear that though. I can hear that. <laughs> but you know, isn't it cool? I, I, we all are literally like brothers, and it never is not wonderful to watch my pals do that stuff because I know what the audience is doing, and it's just the coolest thing. In fact, Cammy is Barry's goofball oh. counterpart. So go yeah, ahead, Cammy. partner in crime. Well, yes. I was besides Rocksteady, I, if you listen to the first five episodes, talking about changing your voice, mm-hmm. the first five episodes of Leonardo, he pretty much kind of just sounds like this. That's I true. I kind of played him here. And then by about, you know, a uh, fourth of the way through, Leonardo is living here. This is how his voice is. Yeah. So if you plunk up one of the first shows and later, I kind of like segued. Nobody went, okay, let's check the voice to make sure it matches. It right. <laughs> kind of evolved into this place. Um, awesome. But yeah, but no, I, when I did Rod Steady, I thought of he was a, you know, a little, <laughs> like a toddler. So he has a, a little lisp and he's like this so with, oh, I, I wish I had one of those. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, Cammy touched. Cammy just touched on something that is really interesting about about doing cartoons. Because when I moved out here in uh, to LA in 1984 from Cleveland, I mm-hmm. I had no um, a, a cart- doing animation was not on my radar. And, and, I, yeah. and I just got real Your lucky me. with an audition for a show called Inspector Gadget. But what I discovered after doing several series is that you start you start where you. Th- where you think you're going to start on that mm-hmm. first episode, but then several episodes in, maybe three, four, five, maybe longer, that the character develops mm-hmm. and it evolves. And so, in uh, just like Cammy just said, you know, I could look at whether it's Ninja Turtles or The Tick or whatever, look at those that first episode or two and see that oh my gosh, this guy doesn't sound at all like what happened? he ended up sounding like. Yeah. You know, uh, three, four, five episodes in. I love it. I love it. Now, Rob, you're one of the only ones to do two different turtles, though. I uh, I got two rides in the turtle van. I figured That's if, right. I lived to be, <laughs> if I live to be a hundred, I can knock them all out. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, thank you for bringing that up. And by the way, this is I always love to take this opportunity when we have um, a, 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 an audience and a platform from which to say the following, and that is that. <clears throat> um, uh, the, I think one of the things that all of us love about this particular aspect of show business is that people involved in it, uh, you know, three of whom you see in my friends, um, they're not only the most gifted, really gifted people, sing, improvise, dialect, sing in character, left, right, you name it, but they're the kindest, most decent people. And you'll hear Frank Welker say, gosh, you know, I, I could do this, but you really got to get Cam Clark. He can knock this out of the park. Or if Townsend will say, hey, I can do that all day, but Jeff Bennett channels that guy. And and because- You know what? I would say, I know you hired Rob Paulson, but I'd like to give a shot at stealing. (laughs) If you're already making, if you've already put your bar that low, Please give me a crack at it. <laughs> I think oh, I man, you are brothers. That is but the, no the first about thing that. that happened when I was told that I could uh, that I was going to get a crack at uh, the Nickelodeon iteration of the show is I mm-hmm. made sure that Barry was not involved, and it was not unusual. Any of us, yeah, he had a hitman same... set up for Barry. To make <laughs> that's sure right, he's take not him involved. out. Um, but that, but that's really it's important for people to know because um, it, you know it, it is a difficult business, only that like any other business, if you're trying, especially as a freelancer, of course, it's challenging, but nobody ever puts a gun to your head to be an actor. You know, Mm -hmm. it's a choice to be here. However, once you start to get some traction, it's difficult. You're looking at four lottery winners to be able to be in a position that we can still work is remarkable. So there is obviously a desire to, okay, man, this is mine. I'm going to hang on to it. But I have never worked with a more purely, gen- genuinely kind group of people, which is precisely why something as important as Ninja Turtles, you want to go to the original guy who's a brother and say, right. and, and Barry, first, oh, Rob, are you kidding me? No, this is, you, God bless you, my friend. That's if there's right. anything or, I can do, let me know. It's or, the you most- know, even a, a little step further back, having come from theater and stuff, yep. stuff where it's a little, I would say, more well, cut fruit. Yep. But I'd be on a call and one of you guys would go, hey, Cam, did you read on blah, blah, blah? And I go, I, I don't think so. You got to call. You got to do that. Yeah. You got to call your agent because this That's is awesome. so right up your alley. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and I was like, what what manner of world have I entered <laughs> where people refer each other? <laughs> That's beautiful. That's it's beautiful. Just and a obviously, great group of people. That and it absolutely and it plays. It shows both on the show and, and outside of it. Thank and you. speaking of which, um, I want to get like a quick impression. Uh, the late great James Avery was such an integral part of oh. the show as well. Oh. And what was it like to work with him? Oh. Obviously. People know him from so many different places. He clearly was the voice of the Shredder for all of us for forever. Yep. Um, but just a big teddy bear. Yes. Totally. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? my goodness. The and nicest guy with the shoes. best laugh, and he never wore shoes. Right. He never yeah. wore shoes? <laughs> he had Nimitz class feet. I mean, wow. just a, they were, really. It's like Sasquatch but, feet. Yeah. They're like That's canoes, amazing. these things. But truly, yeah. Victor, um, he really, truly was a decent guy. Um, uh, again, though, not... And and 
fascinatingly, but again, it really reflects, and maybe it's because it's cartoons. When you do cartoons, by and large, it's about joy. It's about utter creativity. We're not limited by the way we look. We're, we're encouraged to be utterly different. Um, and, and so it's kind of the ultimate play, right? Um, but James, when uh, Fresh Prince became a big hit, mm-hmm. he was demonstrably sad that he couldn't keep it up because his shooting schedule wouldn't allow it. Right. And when we when we would get together rarely, but it did happen uh, and to kind of compare notes and, you know, things kind of settled down. He loved Ninja Turtles. He was so happy to be part of it and even said that when he got I remember he said it to me personally. He said that when he first his first day of shooting on Fresh Prince, everybody freaked out that the shredder was there. Yes, yes. We actually did a a Fresh Prince panel and they talked about that. How, again, how, you know, permeative that the Turtles are, that other shows have that same sort of reverence. Like the the actors within other shows, like, I know who you are. This is fantastic. That is so, so awesome. From Uh, cartoon. I mean, yeah. A life changing, huge impact. Like, it's it's beyond a cartoon, um, but we are running low on time. So I want to give everyone a chance to say one last thing to the fans before we go. Uh, Cam, we'll start with you. Um, Why are you, you just always wanna... starting with me? <laughs> You're the leader. The leader You're leads. The leader. Yeah, the leader leads. <laughs> so what's the question? What's the question, mother? <laughs> You're the straight man. Yes, yes. Just to, just <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs> <laughs> just a did quick you say, uh, did you say that'll be the gay yeah i did that's <laughs> oh, okay. exactly what i said okay um okay well, something to say to the, the yeah just a, out a there quick, in television you know, land thank you or something like that where tell the fans um, that they can find thank you, you or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. okay thank you um <laughs> something like that go to hell whatever, whatever floats your boat yeah me <laughs> i'm no i'm i'm tired of being the leader just put up the episode where I give up being the leader. That's my, my There favorite. we go. There we go. <laughs> so I love everybody that's watching right now. And um, uh, a, a COVID advice, find the glass half full if you there can. There you go. There we Are go. there things that you could do now that you can't when you're on the mousetrap on the, you know, crazy town? Yeah. Uh, I've been able to do some creative things that I couldn't have done before. So try to look outside the germ. There we yeah. go. Wow, there that was go. pretty good. Does I that like work? No, that was really good. Move on to that somebody was really else good. That was now. really good. <laughs> Barry, you're tagged up next, sir. I just want to thank everybody. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I was kind of, uh, you know, I retired and, um, and, and happily so, I must say. But because <laughs> you're mean, living in the sourdough I'm, now, of course. I'm loving yeah, my that life. Sourdough I'm, I'm the that's oldest coming. of the turtles, you know. I'm the old guy, so uh, I just want to thank everybody because the discovery for two reasons. First of all, I want to thank you for you because uh, I didn't know how you felt about us. Yeah. You know, I'd see ratings and they were great, but I didn't know how you felt about us until I started to do comic cons and actually met you in person. And uh, it has been just an extraordinary experience. So yeah. I really, really want to thank you for caring that much. Um, yeah. And it's really beyond belief to me that, that, wonderful. that, that you're like wonderful. that. Yeah. The second yeah. reason though, is because we're doing Comic-Cons and because we started to do Comic-Cons, I got to see these three guys after about 30 years. Oh, here, here. And since we've started to do it, we really have become brothers. Uh, it, it It brought back all of the joy and all of the camaraderie of, of those days and now they're alive and they exist yes. and they will exist as long as we're on this earth. Absolutely. And so I just want to thank you all for bringing us together because that thought I has had really been away. a gift. <laughs> no, no. What was the worst? What did he say? He, he said, he you thought- said you brought us alive. And I said, because Barry thought I had passed away. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But how oh thrilled God. he was to find out that you hadn't. Had exactly. Right. Exactly. It wasn't a, oh, didn't man. he you know, die? It was like a, yay. Did 
Didn't yeah. he die? No, no. Oh my goodness. Rob, what about you? Well, ditto to what my uh, fellow turtles have said. And I, I firstly thank God that we're all here. Um, it's yes. pretty remarkable to do this again, as Barry said. It really, it's just, uh, uh, it, it's just an incredible, wonderfully privileged position in which we find ourselves to absolutely to all of you. Um, and thank you, Victor, and uh, the folks at Wizard World for giving this wonderful opportunity to see those handsome faces again. But um, as Raphael says, laughter is the best medicine, dudes. Cool thing is you can't OD and the refills are free. Calabunga. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Townsend, round us out if you would. All right. Well, dudes, here's the deal. You got to know that without you, we wouldn't even be here. Yeah. So. You are like totally bodacious. You mean the world to us. And all I can say is that as cliche as it sounds, there is nobody like you. So remember that. And I suppose all I can really say is Kawabunga! I could die happy now. This is the best <laughs> moment of my life. Hey, can Ooh. I? Oh my goodness! Can can the four of us uh, treat you to a a little turtle power? Sure. Can we can we do it? Yeah. yeah. I think so we're gonna try. Okay. Count, count us it down. May, okay. Well, I don't know. It may cut us off. But no, 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 no. We're gonna do this. We're gonna make this work. Okay. Here we <laughs> okay. go. In three, two, one. Turtle power. Ladies and gentlemen, that does it. I'm Victor Dangers, the hardest working man in comics, saying thank you for tuning in. Everyone around the world, I got to give a shout out to Michelangelo, our turtle that jumped in. Thanks, Mikey. It was a quick push. We really appreciate it. Again, don't forget, if you're watching live or watching later on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, check out those paid exclusive experiences at wizardworldvirtual.com. And also come back here because we've got plenty more stuff coming. Let me give you a quick rundown. We've got uh, Stella Maeve that's coming from The Magicians. Uh, that'll be later on today. We've got Eddie Furlong. We've got a special oh. Gotham showcase. We got all the cool stuff wow. coming to you right here, Wizard World. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, till next time, I'll see you there. Happy holidays. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.